Have y'all have y'all been keeping up with this uh, Jonah Hill thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. No, okay. So real quick, if you don't know, if you don't know what it is, uh, Jonah Hill's ex uh, put out a bunch of his text messages to her while they were dating, and she was a surfer. She still is, and then they were dating while she was surfing, and it's him being like, "Why you gotta surf around men, and why you got?" And she's like a surfer and a surf instructor. He's like, "Why you gotta surf with men, and why you gotta post pictures of yourself surfing in a bikini on surf?" So it was all this shit like that, right? And it just, it, you, you can see a decline in the text messages where he's clearly so worried about being cheated on, he's not making sense. He's like, why you got to surf with dude? Because then if you're surfing and then he's surfing, what if y'all start surfing on each other? You know what I mean? <laughs> and then, like, y'all are surfing together. And what if you get surf in your mouth? And then now you were just covered in surf and you come home and you're, like, got surf on you. I was <laughs> like, nigga, are you all right? Like... <laughs> You know, so there's been a lot of, of backlash about him being narcissistic and misogynistic and everything. And I think Jonah Hill committed a, a cardinal sin. He really did. Jonah Hill told a woman what to do while being an ugly motherfucker. That's, <laughs> can't do that shit. You cannot do that shit. Like, look, look at the text and then look at his face. You cannot <laughs> tell anybody what to do, sir. That's too much base in your text right now for that hairline you got, you know? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, if John Hamm had sent those same texts, if John Hamm was like, I don't want you talking to any other men, you'd be like, okay, daddy. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> did y'all, uh, did y'all see the Alabama brawl? <laughs> Yo. Yo, who knew Wakanda was in Alabama? That was crazy. <laughs> Yo, know, that was wild. So many people came out of nowhere. That, that shit was like black January 6th. That was like... <laughs> that was crazy. If you didn't see the video, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll explain it really quick. Basically, there was this one guy, he was an employee of the place, right? And uh, he was like asking these people to move their boat, you know? So it was a black employee, but he was asking these people who happened to be white that had the boat to move their boat and they wouldn't move the boat. I don't, I don't even know if this part is true, but I heard that they had been, the riverfront boat that was waiting to dock had been waiting for like 40 minutes because these people refused to move, right? So finally he just keeps going like, you gotta move the boat, you gotta move the boat. They get out of their boat, they're cursing at him and he's not backing down. He's like, you have to move the boat. I work here, you have to move the boat. And then they just keep cursing at him. Finally they put hands on him and then they, they start fighting him and they, he did his best, he held his own for quite a while. So it's not like they beat his ass, but they were clearly ganging up on this dude, right? And uh, you know, a lot of people, as soon as they saw the video, they got upset. I got upset once, I thought it was gonna bum me out just seeing like five white dudes ganging up on this like middle-aged black dude and everything. And some people were upset about the, the racial part immediately, but I'm not gonna lie, I, I was distracted, I, I wasn't. I didn't hate these people because they were ganging up on them and they were white. I hated them because they had a boat. <laughs> you know what I mean? This isn't just a race thing. These rich fucks with a boat are trying to beat up a working class person's insane. You know, it made me furious. And then they, they, started, they started fighting them and then like other people came and you know, a lot of black people already saw what was happening. So then when the riverfront boat docked and other black people who saw what was happening, they all just swarmed. It looked like, you know like, you know, like that one episode in Game of Thrones where you know, they were losing, but then just more just came down the mountain. It was like, I was like, God ah, damn, okay, wow. Send in the troops apparently. I should, I should back up. When the fight started, the initial fight where the dude was getting ganged up on, he just threw his hat. Just threw it, and that almost felt like a signal. That was, I didn't, I, as a black person, I didn't know that was our call to arms. I didn't know this was like, oh, okay, all right, we go now. That was wild to begin with. Then it just, it, it was crazy because then so many people swarmed in, it turned into a huge brawl. And I don't know if you saw a video, but there was one person that wanted to help when they saw him getting jumped so badly. 
that this nigga swam. <laughs> Jumped in the water. From the camera angle, we don't know where he came from. I'd like to think he came from Africa. I'd like to think he started swimming six weeks ago in preparation. Cause look, if you know, if you know, you know, the the history of of black people swimming, especially in the South, you know that we're not known for it. You know what I mean? And so I'm not gonna critique his swimming because I was just happy to see another black dude swim. That's just every one of us swimming is a W, okay? But I do have to comment because it what he wasn't swimming normal. <laughs> Did you see him swim? He wasn't swimming regular. This was not regular swimming, right? This man wasn't swimming to the fight. This man was punching the water till he got there. I knew he was gonna whoop ass when he got out of the water because he would. I've never seen someone punch water till they got to their location. That was so crazy. Go back and watch the video, this man. Punching with horsepower, like I've never seen anything like it. And then he gets out of the water, starts whooping ass, everybody whooping ass and everything. So you know that those white people, when you know it started fighting, then started more fighting. You know they were relieved when the cops got there, but they they must have been conflicted because half the cops were black. Like that's. That's a situation where even when the cops arrive, you're like, ooh, whose side are you on? Because I was kind of doing a thing before you got here. You know what I mean? Honestly, that's, that's what's so wild. Because I think also, I've tried to put my mind in, it, I've tried to put myself in the mind of each person that was in the video in a way. Do you know what I mean? Because that's a terrifying thing. To get jumped is a terrifying thing then the person swimming, then I'm just trying to think about every, every angle that I could think about it from. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, that, that, that must have been a huge surprise because you out here ganging up on this, this one dude with your buddies and then before you know it, there's just like 50 black people. That's, <laughs> listen, listen, I'm telling you right now, let's say y'all right now, y'all just blinked and when you opened your eyes, there were 50 black people behind me. You, I'm not even saying you'd be scared, but you'd be surprised. You'd be like, wow, that was fast. That's all you'd say. You know? Cause that's, that's the thing, that's I think the, the strangest part, one of the, one of the one of the weirdest parts, like when you start watching the video, let's say you start watching the video, you had no context, nobody told you what was gonna happen, you hadn't seen any of the memes yet. The craziest thing about what happens is that, especially as a black person, I think some people are, are curious why black people have been memeing the shit out of it and everything. It's because if you know the South and you know the history of five white guys ganging up on a black guy and how that usually goes, you know, especially when they have enough money for a boat. <laughs> usually doesn't turn out well, you know what I mean? And so this was a different thing. This is a different outcome than, than we've ever really seen before, you know? Because I'll be honest with you. Let's say, let's say we're in a different time and there's no camera phones and they were able to leave before the cops got there. They would have just beat up that dude and left, you know? And, that, and that's my thing where it's like, okay, yeah, whoop their ass, we all laugh, we all celebrate, whatever, but like, Fuck up that boat. Like, fuck up the... <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> like, bust up the bow or something. Like, <laughs> rip a rudder out, please. <laughs> I do think that would hurt them more than the ass whooping. They'd just be <laughs> standing there and then <laughs> looking like skippers. Not the boat! <laughs> You know what's, what's actually crazy? I thought about this this weekend. You know what I've never done at all in my life? I've never, I had to really think about it. I never once in my life have I Googled 
Jada Pinkett Smith. So why do I know so much? Why do any of us know so much? Isn't that crazy? I've never, I've never even Googled Jada and Will. I've never sought any of this information. I know so much about them, it feels like we're related. It's <laughs> devastating. I don't know if y'all saw the most recent interview. She's given her thousandth. <laughs> and in it, she says that her, and I, she says so many things. Uh, <laughs> First of all, she said that she sold crack when she lived in Baltimore, which is like, believable. There's, that's a very entry-level job in Baltimore. That is, that part I was like, and? But then she, she also said her and Will have been separated for like seven years. Which, what? She also said, that Tupac is her soulmate. <laughs> it's like she's going out of her way to hurt Will's feelings now. This, this is really insane. Just, Tupac is your soulmate. You've been married for decades. My soulmate's a guy from the 90s. And the more I think about it, and the more I listen to Jada talk, the more that I'm convinced that Tupac died to get away from her. Like, I feel like... <laughs> easily, easily. They, they dated for a while, you know what I mean? And then he got a taste of what Will was lived with. And then he was in Vegas and he got into it with some dudes on some gang shit and stuff like that. And they shot at him and he thought about what life would be like with Jada. And so he just leaned into the bullet. Like, <laughs> She said they haven't been together. Her and Will have not been together since 2016. Which does make the slap more confusing now. That's right, cause like that, they haven't lived together since 2016. Now it feels less like you were defending your wife and more like you just wanted to hit Chris Rock. Like, turn that man to a tambourine for no reason. That's insane. It really is. Like what? Not even defending your wife at this point. You were defending your neighbor, I guess. <laughs> Haven't lived together since 2016. It also makes the entanglement more confusing now. <laughs> Watching Will and Jada is just like the black inception. You know what I mean? It's just a nightmare and a nightmare and a nightmare. <laughs> There's twists that nobody asked for. <laughs> what? What? Entanglement, because then this is my thing, this is my thing. If they weren't together, why'd they have that whole talk acting like they were together? It made them look worse. Why did they do that? It made her look like a cheater and him look like a cuck, but then they weren't together. So what's the big deal now? I mean, the big deal is that she fucked her son's friend, which is... A lot of people don't know that. That was Jaden's friend. So Jaden over there waiting for play dates and stuff. Ain't nobody showing up like it's a Brazzers video. It's so chaotic. No, no, it's just very chaotic. And, and look, look, I want to be fair for a second. I do want to be fair. Everyone, everyone comes for Jada and everybody shits on Jada so hard. And I get it, it's easy because she won't stop talking. But like, some of this is on Will. We can all agree about some of this is genuinely on Will. People blame Jada for the slap. That's not her fault, that's a grown man. And he got up there and he slapped another grown man. That's, she can't blame her for that. It's not like she used her powers. <laughs> And people blame a lot of the marriage stuff on just Jada. Will is also married to Jada. You know what I mean? He could get a divorce if he wants to, but he doesn't want to. He does not want, and if you pay attention to the interviews, he said it, divorce is not an option. He'd rather them live as single people and still be married than to get a divorce. Which is weird. 
Why? It is weird. I understand. For a long time, they were the symbol of black love, especially in Hollywood, right? And that's a symbol that he carefully curated that maybe she didn't want to be a part of, but it's one of the reasons he can't let it go because it's a failure that he will not accept, right? But to just live as two single people but still be married is weird. <laughs> it's very odd. Who is it for? It's not for them. They're not together. <laughs> it's not for us because now she aired it out. Everybody knows. <laughs> It's not for the kids, because they're already weird. <laughs> so who is this for? And, and like, I, I mean, it must be rough. I do get it. I, I have empathy for both of them genuinely, because I think Will, you know, came on strong, wants to make it work and everything, and Jada was just not having it. And I, a part of me, you know, I'm, I'm wrapping up, but just a, a part of me, I get, I, a part of me gets it. Because if it's not the life that she wanted, it shouldn't be the life she accepted. That's fair. You're, you're an adult in the world and you make your own decisions and you need to live by them, right? But also to be fair to her, I don't have a gorgeous millionaire trying to fuck me and marry me. <laughs> I don't know, it probably seems pretty hard to turn down. I'm not gonna lie. Like if Zendaya walked in here right now, and y'all look like you're together. If she told you, bro, if she was like, I wanna marry you and be with you for the rest of my life, you'd probably be like, look, I'm in a happy relationship and I, I, I found my happiness, I hope you find yours. I'm not saying it'd be easy to say to her, you'd probably say it after I do, but. <laughs> you know? I don't know if y'all saw, but uh, Sam Bankman Freed was found guilty on all charges. If you don't know who Sam Bankman Freed is, he's the dude who uh, looked like somebody microwave Shia LaBeouf. He, he was behind a multi-billion dollar crypto scandal and you know, took a lot of people's money. And got, had a lot of powerful friends so he could take a lot of people's money. He was found guilty. And it, you know, he made, he made a serious mistake. He, he stole money from rich people. This, uh, well, when you think about it, it's really all he did wrong. If you steal from the poor, you're gonna be pretty good off. Like, I don't know. This dude is gonna go away for a long time. Which is crazy, because I don't really understand what he did. <laughs> but I'm glad he didn't do it to me. I'm like, I'm like, you ever just, cause I never got into crypto cause I didn't understand it. So you ever just be so dumb, you miss a whole tragedy? You just. Cause I saw the whole thing coming. I was having FOMO and everything. And then everybody started losing their money. I was like, maybe it pays to not read sometimes. Maybe it's, maybe it's to my benefit that I have stayed as ignorant as possible on very specific subjects in life. I was having a conversation with a friend from back home. And so many things work in, in connection together to get me where I am. I, I saw this article about this guy, I think his name is, I might be mispronouncing it, but uh, Brian Mwende. Uh, and he is in Kenya and he was a lawyer. He was a fake lawyer and he won 26 cases straight. <laughs> 20, 26 cases straight, one after the other. WW, WW. And then they finally caught him. And now he is awaiting trial where I pray he represents himself. <laughs> That is, that's phenomenal. 26, you got fake, and apparently it's a whole thing. I didn't know this, in Kenya, this is a whole thing. There are a bunch of fake lawyers, because he was just the first one. There's a bunch of fake lawyers that just never actually passed the bar, but they've been practicing. I guess they got a storefront or something. Like, I don't know, you just walk in and you're like, you seem like a lawyer. <laughs> you know, the only way I know any lawyer has been a lawyer that I've ever worked with was the paper on the wall behind their desk. If that's fake, I have a fake lawyer. That's <laughs> my favorite story though. My favorite thing that happened was uh, Paris Fashion Week. 
if y'all aren't familiar, Paris has Fashion Week and all these people, people high up in the fashion world, rich people, celebrities, they all descended on Paris for a week to see and be seen and stuff. And while they were there, there was an outbreak of bed bugs, <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> It couldn't be. You gathered all the richest people in the world together in one place and gave them bed bugs? Are we sure this wasn't an activist? You sure this wasn't Greta Thunberg trying new things? You know what I mean? Just her sitting there like, you take a jet, you pay the price. You know, could have been. We don't know. But it was amazing. They gave all those rich people bed bugs. It made me laugh so hard because it's fashion week. So half of them dress like bed bugs to begin with. So like, bed bugs probably thought it was mating season. You know what I mean? They were seeing them walk by like, okay, come through thickness. I'm gonna take a bite of you later. <laughs> but no, people from fashion week spoke to the press and the public. People from the local government spoke to the press and the public and everything. And mostly everyone was trying to maintain a sense of calm the entire time, right? We're very sorry that this is happening. This is not a reflection on our beautiful city. Uh, we're doing our best to move people. Just please stick with us, right? But there was one person that was my favorite. Um, the deputy mayor also spoke to the public and the press. But when the deputy mayor came out, he was like, um, it's an outbreak. <laughs> no one is safe. What kind of leader says no one is safe? We just came out of a global pandemic where no country's leader said no one is safe, even when no one was safe. That's crazy. Then the mayor, because the mayor came out, she was ready. She was like prim proper. She made me feel reassured and I wasn't even in Paris, right? And then she got this assisted ass mayor behind her. No one is safe. She's probably like, get him out of here. It's crazy, no one is safe. Every leader I've ever had has tried to maintain a sense of calm in a crisis. I remember when I was in middle school, in English class, and English class was after lunch, and I'd seen this kid at lunch, and he had a nasty ass lunch. I don't know what it was, but as soon as I saw it, I was like, he gonna be sick. That is disgusting. And so then I sat as far away from him as I could, corner, corner of the classroom, and then middle of class, sure enough, his stomach started bubbling, and we all hear it. He just over here taking notes like Looking at us like, y'all don't hear me, right? It's like, of course we hear you. His stomach is loud as hell. And then in the middle class, he jumps up and runs out. And on the way to running out, because he was very sick, he threw up on the back of like seven kids' heads. And our teacher said, calm down. I know y'all just got thrown up on. Let me get some towels. It's gonna be fine. She didn't say, no one is safe. You see what I mean? I worked at an Italian restaurant that burned down, right? It burned down, and even as the head chef was trying to put the flames out on his back, no one yelled, no one is safe! We just tried to put this man out. Actually, one of my favorite things about when that happened was, okay, so the chef is on fire, right? Like, and then the line cook ran out to the dining hall where everybody else was, and then just yelled to the whole dining hall, we on fire, motherfuckers! <laughs> Which is like as informative as it is unhelpful. Like, he's telling them the details, but not enough to get them moving. Also, we are not on fire, just he is on fire. Some of the building is on fire, but mostly as we, it's just him. He on fire by himself, right? And so no one knows what to do, because even if someone ran in now, it's like, we on fire, motherfuckers! You wouldn't immediately jump up and run. They looked at him and they were like, so is he on drugs or what? And it wasn't until the chef ran out behind him out the door with a couple flames still on his back that everybody cleared out. He yelled, we on fire, motherfuckers. He didn't yell, no one is safe. <laughs> what would even possess you to put the words to get to the public, no one is safe? <laughs> okay. Like what I think about, now that I think about it, I think that was that Deputy Mayor low-key admitted he had bad bugs. That's what it was. It had to be. No one is safe. That means I'm not safe. That's, no one is safe. I wish there was video. There's no video of it happening. But the, you can tell that this is the case because anytime one of our leaders has to speak to us, they're calm because it's not their problem. That's what's happening. 
I grew up in Louisiana. Our, our whole state would get slammed by hurricanes, and the governor would come on TV and be like, we're gonna, we're gonna stick in this together, all right? We're all in this together. He's clearly in Massachusetts, by the way. We're all in this together, all right? Y'all just stick with me, we're gonna get through this. You know what I mean? I think that dude freaked out because it was his problem. It's hard to stay calm when you're in the middle of something, you know? I wish there was video. There's no video. I wish he would just come out. Because you know he yelled it. You know, he was like, no one is safe. It's happening to everybody, including really cool people who don't deserve this. God damn, I wish there was a video just to see him be like, it's an outbreak, y'all. We doing our best. But this is bullshit. I thought I had it all figured out, you know? I was... <sighs> I was sexting. <laughs> and sexting's a very precarious situation. You wanna make sure you're sexting at the right time, you know? Cause if it's like eight o'clock, you still got other people texting you, you know? You don't wanna accidentally send a text that's incoming to somebody cause you opened the thing. You know what I mean? And it's also like, what if you're not that skilled? Like what if I'm not good texting with just my left hand. Now you texting typos and stuff. It's knocking the sexy right out of your sexting. You know, it's like, I'm gonna fud your bass. It's like, no. <laughs> Nobody's into it now. You know? So I had an idea. I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. And I had never, I didn't talk to anybody about it. I had never heard anybody doing this, but in my mind, it was the best thing to do. I was like, I'm just gonna speak to text. So that way I don't gotta worry about the other hand and everything and I can just like get in the zone and stuff. I don't have to worry about other people texting me and everything. And it went horribly wrong. Cause I wasn't at home. I was at my childhood home. So I was in my room, but it wasn't my house, you know? And it was, you know, nine o'clock or so, and we were sexted that little, I'll read you the thing right now, this is what I'm <laughs> Okay, all right. So, <laughs> she's like, oh, okay, and what's good, what would you do <laughs> if you were here right now? And then I was like, girl, I would tear those clothes off, and mom, what are you doing in here? <laughs> Mom, I had the door closed. You can't just open the door. I was, I was just coming to see if you wanted dinner. No, no, I'm okay. Mom, get out right now. Boy, how are you going to tell me to get out of somewhere in my house? I'm sorry, Mom, please, can you please leave and close the door? You know we don't have closed doors in this house. Which is true, that's a very, like, black family thing, of, like, you not closing the door in my house, what you up to in there? I was like, Mama, please leave, please, <laughs> please leave. And she was like, all right, what's the big deal? I was like, nothing, mom, just please, please get out of here. <laughs> so anyway, girl, I would say. <laughs> all right, thank y'all so much. Y'all have a great night.